Parent Army's Army, it is the most wonderful time of the year. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, rocking around the Christmas tree, rewatching Home Alone for the thousandth time, and it is the debut of Parent Army's Frightmare Before Christmas. For the month of December, we are replaying the best and scariest Paranormies episodes every single day of the month with a few surprises to keep things interesting for you guys. We've gained a lot of new subscribers lately, so to help catch up on our old videos, our two-part videos will be condensed into one video. Secondly, we will be giving two prizes of $500 away to the two people who find the Spirit Tech logo hidden in two of the videos throughout the month. This is not two Spirit Tech logos per video, it's two Spirit Tech logos in the entire month of December. And if the same person finds both, that person will win $1,000. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, what's in it for Johnny and Jordan? And to be honest with you guys, we have hit another crossroads with the channel. Most of you that are watching have no idea how YouTube works. At the end of the day, we're not, we're really not doing this for any other reason besides the fact that we want to study our analytics for the entire month and decide if it's worth it for us to do this again full time and we're hoping that you guys as our viewers and our family and everybody that's been there from day one will understand that we're trying to connect with new people our analytics reached out to you and you're the community we have now but there's a huge potential of people that just don't know who we are that if we post every single day at 6 p.m we might reach more people, and that's kind of the, the gain that we want to try and reach. As you guys have seen, we haven't been very active on the channel this year because over a year ago, we went all in on the channel, chasing a dream, and we completely crashed, burned, and failed miserably despite posting regularly. And we're still recovering from that. Our lives suffered greatly. Our relationship with each other suffered greatly, and this is what eventually led to me leaving the channel. We really, really want to do the channel full time again, but we also need to know that it's worth it for us financially to do so. The best month for YouTubers financially is December in terms of ad revenue and everything. So what we need you guys to do is hang out with us every single day at 6 p.m. Central Time in the live premieres and re-watch these old videos for us because if we get the support from you guys, we know that this is something that we are able to pursue at this point of our lives. And I know we see in the comments that a lot of you guys think that we're rich YouTubers and we're just being lazy, but that's not the case at all. In fact, most of the videos that you guys have already seen from last year that we're gonna be replaying this month, they barely made any money at all when they came out. So if this month goes really well for us, we'll know that this is worth it. And if it goes really well for us, what you guys get in return is a ton of brand new Paranormies episodes because we'll have the funds from this month to do so. So if you wanna see a ton of brand new Paranormies episodes in 2023, and have the chance to potentially win $1,000, tune in every day at 6 p.m. Central Time to hang out with us and try your luck. Thanks again for everybody in the Paranormies Army for continuing to support us, and good luck.
Is that look in the fire? Looks like it's just wood. What well, used to be in here? It said get in. No. It said open it. It is open. Get in. It said fire. It said open your mouth. Oh my god. Steven, is that you? Paranormies is officially sponsored by our good friends at Dawn's Photo. Dawn's offers a wide selection of cameras, mics, tripods, lighting, camera bags, anything that a brand new YouTuber or streamer might need. They have locations in Manitoba and Saskatchewan that you can visit in person, but if you don't live in Manitoba or Saskatchewan, then you can just order from their website and they will ship it to you wherever you are in the world. And if you want to order something that's more expensive, or you want to order a lot of things, the good news is that they offer financing through Paybrite for those who qualify. Show them some love because they've been nothing but good to us. They've already improved the overall look of our channel with their camera slide. They're great people and we know that you'll have nothing but a great experience with Dawn's photo in kickstarting your YouTube or streaming career. We've already had all kinds of people ask us about our camera gear and what Dawn's has and what we get from Dawn's. And so it seems like a lot of you guys are really interested in starting your own journey with YouTube or streaming and stuff like that. And we encourage you that if you have your own dreams of being a YouTuber or a streamer, make it a reality in 2022. Normally we start off these videos by telling you guys the entire history of the place that we're investigating and we will tell you as much as we possibly can, but we can't tell you everything this time because it's come to our attention that there are people who are watching our videos and following us around and vandalizing the locations that we have visited. Obviously this is absolutely despicable behavior and we do not condone any of our viewers visiting the places that we have gone to and vandalizing them because keep in mind that a lot of these places are still owned by real people who are trying to preserve them and trying to preserve the history of the area we realize this is probably only like one or two of the same people doing it over and over again and we really like to think that it's not from our community that's doing it but if it was you need to understand that this paints us in a very bad light and it really affects us getting new locations going forward and you know if you're a fan of the channel and you want us to see us you know go to new locations then you'll have to stop doing this if it's somewhere from our community and with all that being said that's why we have to be a little bit more secretive about this location that we're at because it actually is a national historic site of canada it's the only one left of its kind in the province and it's about 150 years old and it belonged to the family that herded cattle for the entire area. Everything in the house is original from the clock to the floors that were hand painted by the women who had originally lived there. And the only thing that kept us warm during the negative 30 degree weather that we were going through was the wood stove located in the middle of the house. And it was the wood stove that actually got our attention in the first place. What well, used to be in here? It said get in. No. People who have stayed the night here before have reported waking up from a dream, feeling like they're claustrophobic with the strong smell of ash in the air. Other people have straight up had dreams of being burned alive in that very same fireplace. We didn't have a whole lot to go on story-wise about this house uh, before we got there, but given people's accounts of having these very strange, very vivid dreams inside of the house, as well as the very, very long and storied history of this place, we just had a gut feeling that there might be some sort of undiscovered and unreported 
paranormal activity happening here. And we couldn't help but wonder, is there a story here that we could help uncover that's been lost for more than a century? We had our eye on this place for a very long time. And finally, on the two coldest nights of January, we were able to stay in this house to see if we could potentially uncover this lost story. Let's sit on this bed again. Last night when we were doing a live stream, you lit this up right on this bed. Is that you knocking? Gadget. Gadget, yeah, we do have some gadgets here. Give Jordan one good scare for me. Oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Thank you. Oh, that was insane. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. He's starting to freak out. He's, he's starting to have a... Uh... Oh, thank you. You're allowed to touch him. You're allowed to touch him. Lay in bed with him if you want to. Thank you so much. I don't get it. This, this went off like... This, this went off like... This, this went off like... This went off like red, red. Sitting right here? Yes. For like a couple seconds, like two, three seconds. Like that. Holy, what the fuck? Like that. Like that. It just stopped. Yeah, like what? that. Thank you. We were just talking about it. Thank you so much. During this investigation, we did things a little bit differently. Um, we did do a live stream the night before on January 24th. And that is going to be coming into play a lot during this investigation. So I dated it on the uh, top of the screen so that you guys can tell basically the timeline of when things started to happen. But that's what we went for with this investigation because a lot of stuff did happen during the live stream that we want to touch on um, in regards to what was going on the night we were there. Could you do it again? It only happened like twice though, so. Steven. Steven. Did you just ask what your name was? Yeah. Steven, if that's you, can you light up this K2 meter for us? You were playing with this last night a little bit. Steven, was this your house? Breathing. Breathing? I've been hearing a lot of knocking in this place. Fan. Fan? There's a fan going over here. Right here. It's what about the fan? The fan is right underneath the clock. The clock, let's... You know how you can see that, like, uh, the light through the window there? Yeah, oh yeah. I thought I saw something like pass by it. Oh, what was that? What was that? What? You hear that? That, that was like what a, I heard earlier. That was like a, like like a, a squeaking or something. Like yeah. A whistle. A whistle or a squeak, something like that. Really high pitched. I've only heard it two times. Oh, whoa. What? It said go. Go? Oh, God. Oh, wait, you see it? You see that spike? Look here, so, oh yeah. Something right here by this clock. Maybe it isn't the clock though. I don't know yet. It's gotta be the clock. Cause it's not. Oh. Clock! It, it just clock? said clock! It went off around it yesterday like a couple times, right? Yeah. Oh. oh. So again, this is this is the only item we're not supposed to touch here. It 
It's like a weird pattern. That is strange. Whoa. Whoa. You got more solid as you brought it down? When the owner was giving us the tour of the place and just explaining how everything worked and how old the place was and everything, she did mention to us that we were absolutely not allowed to touch the clock under any circumstance. And we didn't question it at the time, but now we kind of wish that we did because one of the first spots during the live stream on the first night that we got a spike on the K2 meter was the clock, which it was only then that we really found that really suspicious and really felt that there was something attached to that clock or some kind of some kind of story to be told there and not only was the k2 spike weird enough around the clock we were standing around it trying to figure out what was going on and then the spirit box that we had set up on the table it said clock <laughs> clock it, it clock? just said clock which really it furthered our suspicion that there was definitely something surrounding that clock are definitely a mystery there. Does this clock have some significance or sentimental value? There's got to be a story behind that clock. Yeah, I know. I'm hoping I couldn't find anything in the in what we read what I was reading today in the books. If anybody's here, can you tap on a wall? Can you do that? This K2, this K2 just went off. That camera would have actually caught it. Going off. Is this your rocking chair? Oh, REM pod in the bathroom. Oh my god. Steven, is that you? That stops. So the K2 just went off. And then this goes off. What was that though? I don't know. It sounded like wind or something. Here it is again. Oh, shh, shh. Here it is again. One of these. I didn't feel a draft, though. No. You think? I know that that mm. door has a draft, but that one, there's nothing there. Was this your rocking chair that you used to sit? Can I sit beside you? I'd love to have a conversation with you. We did have a little bit of a conversation last night in the live stream when Jordan was laying in bed. I closed the toilet earlier. I was sitting on it actually when we were doing our solos. There's something in the bathroom. I heard something in the bathroom. Oh, there goes the... Is that you? I heard you over here. I don't want to startle you. Anybody's in here, can you let me know? Bathroom. We just were there. Okay, bathroom. He cannot hear me. I can hear that spirit box so loud. How long are you in the bathroom? Uh, like, I don't know, two, three minutes? Two, three minutes? I, like 30 seconds ago, I heard Johnny, where did you go? I know. It, it said, yeah, but it said bathroom, and then I went in there, and it said, Johnny, where do you go? Dude, oh, that, that K2 meter started redlining. I'm what? done. I'm done for right now. I know that in the live stream yesterday, people were saying that the toilet seat was, like, down, and then it was up, or vice versa. And totally unbeknownst to me, 
as this was going on, Johnny hears a noise from the bathroom. He went to go check it out, and as soon as he comes back, that's when I hear the word bathroom come through. It was the clearest word that I had ever heard in a sensory deprivation. And then this is the craziest part. As soon as he goes back to the bathroom to check it out, I hear once again, very clear, Johnny, where did you go? And another weird thing to notice as this all this is going on during the entire live stream, it seemed that the toilet seat was going up and down. I know I had closed it at one point and then- I closed the toilet earlier. I was sitting on it actually when we were doing our solos. It was either we both went back or Johnny went back, something like that, and we noticed that it was it was up again. <laughs> so, you know, once again, we were going into this completely blind, uh, not a whole lot to go off of, but, you know, Steven was a name that we had come to know throughout our time there that could potentially unravel some of the story that we had come to find out. So we're trying to see if anybody's here. Maybe we somebody named Steven or... Immediately the REM pod as soon as he said Steven. And it hasn't gone it off. It hasn't in, gone off in hours. During, during the live stream. It didn't yeah. go off at all. And solid. It did go off earlier mm -hmm. that one time in the bathroom, but... That's really weird. What was that? Yeah, you heard that too? Yeah. It was a... Shh. I heard something behind me. Oh my god! Okay, let's say goodbye. And solid. It did go off earlier mm -hmm. that one time in the bathroom, but... That's really weird. What was that? Yeah, you heard that too? Yeah, it was a shh. I heard something behind me. Oh my god! Okay, let's say goodbye. Okay, yeah. As soon as good. we brought this thing out, yeah. okay. Just move it. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye, yeah. whoever you are. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the bathroom then. Or do you wanna, I guess we gotta check that out first. That one's about to go off too. To be completely honest with you guys, I did have my doubts about this place being really haunted or, you know, the site of any sort of paranormal activity because of the lack of history and how old it is. You'd think somebody would have said a little bit more than we have heard by this point. So, you know, doing the Ouija board, in my mind, was almost like, kind of like a dare. Like, if anything is here, then this is your shot, right? Holy shit. What is that noise? You hear that too? Yeah, it's, it's like, like, it's like something shuffling. sliding. Yeah. What is that? That's freaking me out, actually. As soon as we brought the board out. Moan. Moan? moan? Somebody said they heard a moan yesterday. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes. Hearing, mo hearing moaning. Okay. Steven, is that you? Ow. Oh, this is fun. Quake. Quake? Okay, that was interesting, as soon as we pull up the Ouija board. It's kind of weird. Stuck on 606. Was that Steven that we heard shuffling across the floor? Was that you that moved these? I keep hearing that shuffling. Up. What'd it say? Up. 
like at the windmill. Sheep. Up. What did it say? Up. Like at the windmill? Sheep. Up. What did it say? Up. Like at the windmill? Sheep. You in here? Now it's solid on two bars. Whoa, it is. Up. So bed sheet set up there. Five. Ow. Ow, my finger. Bet. What did it say? Bet. Hey. This door oh Shh. this door was closed. This door is closed. Hang on. I heard a knock. England. I thought I heard a knock. <laughs> oh. Okay. That was weird. Is this your is this your bedroom, Steven? This door oh. Shh. This door was closed. This door is closed. England. I thought I heard a knock. <laughs> oh. Okay. That was weird. Is this your is this your bedroom, Steven? That door was a hundred percent open when we I think it was, we yeah. Got the Shakes in my voice a little bit. I saw something out that window. It's a flash by the window. Like something like, white wearing white. It wasn't a light? You think it was a actual I don't think so. person? I think Jordan and I went into this one a little bit more skeptical with the both of us, but seeing the sock warmers move and then seeing the door move and hearing the knock, whether that is paranormal or not, or just a draft, it's very hard to tell, but I think we both took this one with a grain of salt and made the best of it. And I think this one's up to you guys to, you know, let us know what you think because we're very, it's, this isn't the, the craziest thing we've seen. So this is one that we're just kind of, you know, questioning for now. Steven, did you, I'm assuming your name is Steven. If it's not, then I apologize. It seems like you really didn't like that we brought the Ouija board out. Yeah, it seems like that's immediately when Liberty. things. Liberty. Oh, the K2 spiked a little bit. Really? On the chair, yeah. Nothing Steven. now though. Oh, oh there goes that on the bedroom? Yeah, your room. Steven, was this, it seems like, it's like trying to piece a little thing together. Maybe that was his room. This was his rocking chair because, oh, very weird. Just one at a time. Yeah. Steven, was this your bedroom? Can I sit with you? Moan. Moan again. It said it again. There it goes, totally dead. Totally, as soon as I sit here. Am I sitting on you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sit, sit there again. Can you sit there again? I'm gonna sit down, is that okay? Why? Oh. Now he doesn't sound happy now. Should he move? Oh. Yeah, move. <laughs> what was that? You know what that actually sounded like? It sounded like, like an old clock. Like that. What that's it? Didn't say anything. Shit. What is that noise?
Could it be a draft somewhere? I don't know. Now we have two REM pods going on opposite ends of the house. Yeah. In the bathroom on completely opposite ends of the house. Why is that one not going though? What the hell's going on? You know what it makes me wonder about those REM pods? Hmm. You know how like, some people are like, oh, they're malfunctioning because they're just constantly going up. What if my spirit is just literally holding onto it because mm -hmm. it can gain some energy from it? Yeah. Like, it's not like they're, it's not that they're trying to do it to, to maybe can we some communicate or say anything, but maybe they're just- It's just an like, easy thing, Like, it's yeah. almost like charging, you know? Yeah. Huh. It's an interesting thought. Well, it's yeah, a quick. Yeah, I gotta change the batteries. Okay. Oh, it said Johnny immediately. Who are we speaking to? Is this Steven? I said you. Are you talking to me or to Johnny? I. Okay. Uh, alone. You're just alone in this house? Uh, it said shower. Okay. Or show her. One of the two. What am I going to find? It said look to your left. Kind of feels like somebody's standing behind me. Okay. What am I going to find in the shower? It said look over there. Okay, I'm looking. What am I looking for? Are you in the shower? Said, do you see us? No, I don't see you. Said, watch out. What was I supposed to find? Said, do you? The thing is going crazy. <clears throat> I've never seen it do that before. Do you? The thing is going crazy. I've never seen it do that before. Said, sunny? Who painted it this? It said fire. Fire? It said look. Look in Open the- Open it. It said look in the fire. Okay. Oh, burn pod in the bedroom. Okay. Look, what am I gonna find in the it fire? Said, it's freaky. It said what was that? It said it's over freaky? here. Looks like it's just wood. What used to be in here? Said get in. No. Said open it. It is open. Get in. Said fire. Said open your mouth. Okay, it's open. Said get in here. I'm gonna lock this back up. We're just gonna keep that closed. So what are you exactly? Who are you? You sound kind of mean. You call me names, you're telling me to get into the fire. It said Steven. So this is Steven. It said who are you? You know who I am, and you know who this is, right? It said I know now. Steven, why are you so angry? What happened? What happened, Steven? Said some, some, sound like Ronald hurt me or something like that. I'm sorry to hear that. Who is Ronald? The night definitely seemed to pick up after we broke out the Ouija board, and it usually does, but things even got darker when Johnny did the sensory deprivation, and we decided that Johnny needed to do the sensory because his name had come up over and over and over again. So when Johnny sat down to do the sensory, I had high hopes for it, and not only did it really deliver as far as I'm concerned, the night got even darker, and just the things that he was saying was creeping me out, and that's when I started feeling like we got 
a little bit closer to the mystery of the people having the dreams about the fire because whatever was speaking through Johnny at that time had actually told me to get into the fireplace. At the end of the night, um, when we were packed up and ready to go, we had something really odd happen with the REM pod um, that was in the bathroom the entire night. I've never seen it do this. Yeah, so we're just packing up. Yeah, and that... I've never seen that. I don't even know what that means. It's not even... That, yeah, that guy is the... That's the temperature gauge on top. So that's supposed to go blue if it's cold and red if it gets hotter. But it's just flashing purple. What yeah. happens if I touch it and it does that? Nothing. Nothing. That doesn't even... Yeah. Yeah, this should light up that. And is your wait? Is your huh? is your thing switched? Yeah. Switch to rotate. Yeah. Really Maybe it could mean it's just running out of battery. I don't think so. That one's been going, it's this, the one, what? That makes no sense. No sense. Something's been like, what? What is going on? Never seen this before. Oh. There's a noise. You heard that noise over here too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what this means. I'm guessing it just means low battery, but... It's weird. I mean, we've had them die before and it's never done that. It's really odd. And then uh, to hear that noise right out here as soon as you flicked it. We're just getting ready to leave. <laughs> and then something over here. That's just it. This place is, is odd. Nothing seems very conclusive. It's just very odd. It's, odd. it's like, yeah, if you weren't actually like looking for stuff like we were, you wouldn't have noticed anything. But because we were just like openly trying to mm -hmm. make stuff happen. Yeah, like if, yeah, if you weren't paying attention, it would just like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just look past it. Or it just wouldn't even happen because you're not actively trying. Yeah, and, yeah, I guess, yeah. It would have happened. It's like, it's like the saying, does it, you know, does it, when a tree falls in the woods, does it make a noise, right? Right. Hey, well, if there is something here, thank you for trying. And if not, then we're talking to no one. It's unfortunate that, you know, this was the very end of the night, but I do feel like there is a bit of a story that could have been told. Johnny said it best earlier. We'll just leave this one up to you guys to decide whether or not something is going on here. But if you want our opinion, we do believe that there is something going on here, but it's not something that we could so neatly wrap up in a couple of nights like we've been able to do in the past. Maybe we weren't investigating the right areas, maybe we weren't asking the right questions, but it also seems to us that whatever we were dealing with, if his name was in fact Steven, then he didn't really want to communicate. And I personally believe that because 
it seemed like as soon as I started getting somewhere during Johnny's sensory deprivation, in uncovering some of Steven's history, he just disappeared on me. And it especially becomes clear to me, just taking into account how hostile he seemed to me just prior to that. We believe that the success of an investigation lies on the entities and the investigators equally. If Steven didn't want to talk, then there's no way that we could force him. But I do believe there is more to the story that is yet to be uncovered. And it's something that I believe that we could uncover if we were to go back and visit him again.